This video is sponsored by Squarespace. For 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. It's hard to believe, but it is finally here. After years of waiting for this, with plenty of speculation and hopes and rumors, and even some leaks as well, which tends to always happen with stuff like this, it's finally here. I've got it right here in front of me. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, it's finally out. And also, finally out today, is the Leica Q3, which is what we're going to be talking about today. I was lucky enough to spend a little bit of time with a pre-production unit a little while ago. So in this video, I'm going to share everything that's new on this camera coming from the Q2, everything they've changed or added. I'll share some of my own photos that I made with the camera and just give my overall thoughts and opinions. And this is one that people will have a lot of opinions on. So uh, let's get into it. If you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with the Q system. This is a fixed lens full frame camera featuring a 28mm f1.7 Sumalux lens. The lens hasn't changed at all. If you're just looking at the camera itself, just from the front, it's going to look pretty much identical to the Q2, but there have been a lot of changes into the Q3. First of all, the sensor coming from the Q2, which had a 47 megapixel sensor, the Q3 has a 60 megapixel sensor featuring the same triple resolution technology in the Leica M11 system. So you have the option to shoot your DNG files, your raw format in three different resolutions. You have 60 megapixels, 36 megapixels, or 18 megapixels. This was originally introduced in the M11 when that was launched. And then with the M11 monochrome, they added it there as well. Now for the first time outside of the M system, we have it in the Q3. So this is going to be helpful if you want to save on file size. You know, you're going to be able to get a lot more photos as you drop the resolution, but you still do get the DNG raw format, so you still have tons of flexibility there. And if you do need that extra resolution, going up to 60 megapixels, it's plenty of information there. You have a lot of room to crop, which we'll get into more in just a little bit. The lens does feature a macro mode, which you can activate just by rotating the dial on the lens, and you can actually see your focusing scale change in real time. It does change the maximum aperture from f1.7 to f2.8. However, adding that extra functionality, being able to focus that much closer, it's really, really nice. Leica states this sensor is going to give you 14 stops of dynamic range, just like the Q2. However, there is an updated processor inside the camera, kind of giving it everything it needs. We went from the Leica Maestro series to the Maestro 4 series, and it's going to be something needed for some of the new functionality. The Q2 featured an IP52 rating for its weather sealing and weather resistance. With the Leica Q3, they were able to keep that same IP52 rating, which is great even despite making some pretty major body changes to the camera. When the Q2 was released and the resolution was raised to 47 megapixels, the digital zoom feature giving you frame lines for 35, 50 millimeter, and 75 millimeters, it didn't crop in camera, it did, you know, basically just for the preview. As you brought the DNG file into post, you still had the full resolution there in the entire 28 millimeter field of view. With this camera, the increased resolution up to 60 megapixels, you've got 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 75 millimeter, and also now 90 millimeter frame lines in the digital zoom option as well, which I did test out. And having 60 megapixels is plenty of room to crop and work with, but I was still really shocked at just how much detail was still there using the digital crop all the way into 90 millimeters. Now again, this is just a digital zoom. It's just cropping in from that 28 millimeter field of view. It's not the same thing as comparing it to an actual 35 or an actual 50 or 75 or 90, uh, but just the ability to crop in that much and seeing how much detail was still there, even shooting wide open, I was truly surprised by that. The ISO range has also been updated. On the Q2, you had everything from 50 to 50,000. On the Q3, you have 50 to 100,000. The autofocusing system on the camera has also been changed. So on the Q2, we had just contrast detect autofocus, which isn't quite as fast as something like phase detect. This camera actually has sort of a hybrid between phase detect and contrast detect in order to give you actual accuracy, but also increased speed in the autofocus, which is great to see any camera with autofocus, the faster it is and the less it kind of just gets in the way, the better. The video feature on this camera has also changed, which isn't something I tested out. I've got to be honest with you, I just didn't think about it. When I think of this camera, I think of just everyday photography and not necessarily video. But if you're interested in shooting video on the Q system, the Q2, you maxed out at 4K or Cine 4K, 
in the Q3 you have actual 8K recording. The EVF has also been updated as well. In the Q2 there was a 3.68 megapixel OLED EVF. Now in the Q3 we have a 5.76 megapixel OLED EVF. The battery is also changed. It's the same size and same quick release system on the bottom of the camera. However, the Q3 is going to come with a battery that has a little bit more juice in it. You went from an 1860 milliamp hour battery in the Q2. The Q3 is coming with a 2200 milliamp hour battery, which I was told is necessary in order to do the 8K video. I'm not sure if it's going to affect the actual photography case or if you need that more juice in order to power the processor or actually shoot the photos. However, it is the same size battery. You're just going to get more juice out of this one. On the Q2, there was no way to connect to the camera via HDMI for your video or USB-C, whether that be for charging or for connecting to gimbals or anything like that, again, if you're shooting video. However, with the Q3, we have an HDMI and a USB-C port on the left side of the camera, which is great. If you know, I've talked about this a bunch with other cameras. USB-C charging especially, it's incredibly useful, so I'm happy to see that in a camera like this that you're going to be taking with you pretty much everywhere, or at least a camera like this is designed to be something you can always take with you. And speaking of charging, they are releasing this new accessory. It's a hand grip which enables wireless charging. So this is a first, I believe, on any full frame camera on the market, but if you have the optional hand grip, that enables wireless charging on both the Leica charging pad, which they're making themselves, but also any other wireless charging pad that you have for a phone or tablet. As long as it's putting out 10 watts of power, it's going to be wireless charging for the camera with that grip, which is definitely unexpected. Along with that optional hand grip, they're also releasing other accessories, everything from new lens caps and lens hoods, soft shutter releases, thumbs up grips, leather cases. They're releasing a lot of different accessories for this camera. You can transfer your files directly from the camera to your phone, whether that be through Bluetooth or using the included Leica Photos lightning cable. Uh, it transfers files up to 10 times faster than the previous model, and it's incredibly useful. I use the Leica Photos app with my M11 monochrome all the time, so to see this with the increased speed in the Q3, it's great to see. But by far, without a doubt, the biggest change to this camera is on the backside of the camera. So not only were the buttons changed up and moved over to the right of the display, now for the first time the Q3 features a tiltable display. As soon as I saw this display, I personally was excited, and we'll talk more about that in just a little bit in my final thoughts, but I knew it was going to create a very clear divide. There would be people who liked the functionality of the tilt screen and would take advantage of using that and shooting in lower scenarios or holding the camera up higher and still being able to see your display. And then I knew there would be people who just saw the look of it and the fact that it's changed at all that would upset some people and without a doubt I've been reading the comments as some of the leaks have happened where people can see an early look at the camera uh, just a week or so before this video will actually go up and I can already tell people are very upset. Not everybody but there are people who are upset about the body change. Everything from the buttons being moved as well as just the actual aesthetic of the camera because in order to accommodate the tilt screen it has changed a little bit. Not only is the door on the left side of the camera for the USB-C and HDMI, but also the display itself, it lifts out just ever so slightly. And I'm talking a very, very small amount, but you change anything on any Leica camera and there are gonna be people who are upset about it. Uh, if you remember when the M11 dropped the bottom plate of that camera, whew, while I had the camera, I tried to show as much as I could what that actually looks like, you know, as close as possible and just how it feels and looks while it's in your hand. But I'm telling you, it is a very, very small amount. Despite that, I know people are going to be upset about it. So let me know what you think about it in the comments and uh, it'll be interesting to read. I will also say that when I first got the camera out and opened it up and started using the tilt screen, I was shocked at how sturdy it felt. I mean, it is without a doubt like the sturdiest and most like well-built feeling tiltable display on any camera I've used. Um, you could pick this thing up by the tilt screen and it doesn't feel like it's going to break. Not that I did that or anything. All in all, jumping from the Q2 to the Q3, there have been a lot of changes this generation, both internally and externally. Tiltable display, improved autofocus, improved EVF, higher resolution, 8K video, 
HDMI and USB-C, faster connectivity with Leica Photos, more powerful battery, more powerful processor, wireless charging, USB-C, HDMI, they have really made a lot of changes here. And this camera, at least from their own marketing, it's really being catered towards that audience who wants an everyday carry kind of camera, something that you can take with you anywhere. I'm a big advocate for always taking the camera with you. I've talked about it a million times at this point on the channel, but just always having the camera with you. That's important. So a camera like this should appeal to someone like me, just sort of with that in mind, someone who always wants to bring a camera with you. However, me personally, there are some things about this camera that I'm not necessarily a fan of. So let's talk about the things I like and don't like. Before we get into that, I'm gonna take a minute to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. When I created mattdayphoto.com, I did that with Squarespace. It was a no-brainer. They had everything that I needed in one place. And almost 10 years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it super easy to use and do it yourself. Drag and drop customization, tons of templates to choose from, with 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. You can share your work there, have a place where people can contact you or schedule appointments. You can even set up your own online store. Since I launched mattdayphoto.com, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website. I didn't have to use any third-party system. Keeping track of inventory and shipping fulfillment is a breeze. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start with a free trial at squarespace.com and check it out for yourself. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. That'll save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now, back to the video. The tiltable display, I personally think this is a good choice for the Q system. I am definitely not going to be in the majority with this, but I think for this particular camera, it makes a lot of sense. Whether you're using the macro mode or just kind of taking a camera with you, where you don't necessarily want to be as involved in the process. Like, I love my M11 monochrome. I love the rangefinder system. I love everything about this shooting experience. With, when I'm using the Q, I found myself much more often using the LCD display and just being able to tilt it and point and shoot. Uh, it just, to me, I think it makes a lot of sense for this particular camera and how most people are going to be using it. Whether or not they add it to other systems like the SL, since that's something that a lot of video shooters as well really like and having that kind of display is helpful for video especially. Time will tell, I have no idea. I don't want them to make that change on the M series though. Um, I know it's silly to like it in one and not in the other, but if they had to make the physical change to the body, I'm okay with it on the Q. Maybe it's because I don't own a Q and it's not something that I love as much as I love the M system. If they were to do that on the M and they had to make that physical change and the body itself changed, they might have a riot on their hands in all honesty. Um, I, I don't think that it's something that they would do in the M system, at least just from my own thought, unless they were able to do it without changing a single bit of the actual you know, physical dimension of the camera. I don't think they would go that far on the M. At least I hope not. I just think on the Q system, having that tiltable display, something that a lot of people are gonna be using in a very point and shoot kind of environment, I just think it makes sense on that camera. However, there are a couple of things on the Q3 that I wasn't as much of a fan of or just flat out didn't like. And I'm gonna go ahead and address those as well just for the sake of being fair here because these are all just my own thoughts. Um, I love the finish on my M11 monochrome. It's this nice textured finish. It adds just a little bit more grip to the camera. As soon as I picked up the Q3, and I can't remember if the Q2 has the same finish. I believe it does. But as soon as I picked it up, it felt like I was holding something that was just going to slip right out of my hand because it has this really sleek and smooth finish to it, which might appeal to a lot of people. It might appeal to the majority of people. Me personally, though, immediately I was like, if I were to actually buy this camera, I would want either some sort of, you know, the hand grip or the thumbs up, something to give me a much more secure grip on the camera. Because even it, with that little kind of like thumb indent on the back of the camera, it was really, really slippery, and uh, I've just really come to love the matte finish and texture on this camera, and I think having that on a camera, especially like the Q3, where you're gonna be holding it out, maybe shooting one-handed, having a little bit more of a textured finish and giving you just a little bit more grip, um, I just think that would make a lot of sense for a camera like that. It's a very, very small thing, 
One thing that I was shocked to not see in this camera and something that I think is it would make like perfect sense for something like this, no internal storage. And I know it's silly because they just only recently started having internal storage with the M11 and now the M11 monochrome. But with a camera like that, something you're gonna be taking with you, or at least again to their marketing, something that's meant to be an everyday carry kind of camera, the amount of times that I have forgotten an SD card at home, uh, the amount of times I'd gone out with my M6 and forgot a roll of film, just having the internal storage in the camera itself, it's extremely useful and it just, it gives you that peace of mind knowing that no matter what, even if your SD card fills up or if you forget it at home, you can still keep shooting. I think something like the Q system where it's meant to be taken with you everywhere, I just feel like that makes perfect sense for that system, but it's not here. You have the one SD card slot, which isn't a deal breaker by any means. And I know some people are probably upset that I'm even bringing that up, but I just think if you're gonna have it in the M system, it would make perfect sense in the Q system as well. And I'm not a camera designer. I have no idea what it takes to put that in the camera, whether or not it's possible. They've clearly been able to do a lot with that same body using the tilt display and adding more inputs. If they could add that into the camera at some point, I just think that would make a lot of system, it would make a lot of sense for that system. Again, it's a very small thing. I just saw that as a missed opportunity, something that would really benefit a camera like this, having that extra internal storage, again, working with just one SD card slot. I think it makes a lot of sense, but let me know what you think in the comments down below or any of your other thoughts on the changes here to the Q3, because I know there are a lot of them and there will be a lot of opinions on that. If you're interested in seeing any prints or purchasing any prints from this camera that I've made, I'm adding some limited prints from my time with the camera on my website. You can see that at mattdayphoto.com, which was made with today's sponsor, Squarespace. That's it for this one. Thank you all for watching this video. Huge shout out to Leica Camera USA for letting me check the camera out ahead of the launch. Always a pleasure and an honor. Um, if you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comments. I'm sure there will be a lot of opinions down there. Looking forward to reading them and keeping the conversation going. But that's it for today. So thank you all for watching. I love you very much. I'll see you next time.